Alrighty, so in this video I am going to attempt to describe the ubiquinone cycle. Um, ubiquinone is an electron carrier molecule found in the electron transport chain. Um, it's also known as coenzyme Q. Which will be important later when I show you the cycle in complex 3 where we refer to it as just simply Q. Um, so here you can see the structure of ubiquinone right here. This structure is in its oxidized form. Oxidized. Oh no, spelled it wrong. One sec. <laughs> Oxidized form. So this is in its oxidized form. Um, these two oxygen molecules right here are the redox active sites. And this long, this isoprene tail here, this N signifies that it is repeated over and over again, is the hydrophobic part of the molecule. Um, so ubiquinone always stays inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. It's, it's a membrane protein or a membrane molecule. It's not actually a protein. Sorry about that. Um, it's a membrane molecule, so it doesn't leave the inner mitochondrial membrane. It just floats around within the membrane to transfer the electrons. So when it's in this state, it arrives at complex one or two, and it will receive an electron one at a time. The first electron will attack here at this electrophilic carbon site, and then the, the electron will get passed. The negative charge will end up on this oxygen right here, and as you can see down here, so there's a negative charge on this oxygen, and this oxygen has a radical. Um, the reason that it can stay in this radical form, it just stays here for a short time, but the reason that it can accept this radical form is because of this nice aromaticity in the ring here. Then shortly after that, it absorbs another electron and two hydrogens, and then we can see that it's in its fully reduced state. State right here, um, another way of telling this other than trying to analyze the electrons is just by seeing that here, up here we had more bonds to carbon and here we now have more bonds to hydrogen in the molecule. So if you gain bonds to hydrogen, that's another um, way to tell that you have been reduced. So to go from this step to this step, now this molecule travels across the, um, travels within the, the in, inner mitochondrial membrane to complex three. And then at complex three, it will transfer its electrons to complex three which will then continue on down the electron transport chain, ultimately ending with oxygen getting reduced. Um, so here, this is just a little simplified diagram of complex three. Obviously, there's much more complicated things going on here than just a couple active sites, but for our purposes, this will give us a, a view as to how the ubiquinone the, that is reduced will become reoxidized and then it can complete the cycle. So this is complex three right here, this gray um, cube type thing. And this is the, the inner mitochondrial membrane. So inner mitochondrial membrane. Brain. On the outside here, we have the cytosol, or intermembrane space, whatever you, either one is acceptable. Cytosol. And down here we have the matrix. Okay, so what first happens is these two active sites are always full, and here we have a electron acceptor, which could be a, a iron solver cluster, or maybe a heme group, something of that nature. Um, so these two active sites are full, because, so first, uh, a reduced ubiquinone molecule comes in here, and then what it will do is it will um, expel its two protons into the cytosol, and it will expel one of its electrons into this um, electron accepting group, and one of its protons, sorry, and one of its electrons to this other ubiquinone here, which is in the oxidized state. Um, so that's, so then if you move over to this step, we can see that it's done that. It's gotten rid of its protons and both of its electrons as well. 
So this is the same ubiquinone as over here, but then what happens is this ubiquinone that has now been oxidized will leave and a new reduced ubiquinone will come in. So once we have this new ubiquinone in here, oh, and one thing I forgot, this electron will be passed on to cytochrome C. And this cytochrome C can move along in the cytosol and pass it on to pass it's this electron that accepted onto um, cytochrome C oxidase or complex four. Um, so then once we have this second ubiquinone, the second reduced ubiquinone here, then it will do much the same thing as it did before. It will expel its two protons up into the cytosol, give one electron to the electron accepting group, and one more electron to the partially um, reduced ubiquinone down in this site. This ubiquinone now that has two electrons, one before and one from here, will accept two more protons, and then now it is fully reduced, so these ubiquinones will do a swap because this guy is now fully oxidized, this guy is fully reduced. These two ubiquinones will sp swap spaces, and this um, oxidized ubiquinone will tr swap back up to here and you'll have the reduced one in the active site and the whole cycle will continue. This, this reduced one will transfer back to here and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, the only thing that doesn't really make sense about this model is that it's saying that four protons are expelled e for every ubiquinone that is um, reoxidized. Now, really complex three only expels two protons across on average, but the thing is you have to remember this is an average. So even though it, our model shows that both are being expelled across into the cytosol, maybe sometimes two will, maybe sometimes one will, maybe sometimes it will expel both down here. And same with these things, like these aren't perfect numbers, it really depends because this is at the molecular level. Sometimes it might not happen perfectly as our model suggests. So that's one error with this model, but just keep that in mind that the amount of protons that are pumped across is two for complex three and not four as this model suggests. So I hope that was helpful and I wasn't too unclear, but thanks for watching.